left foot, right foot, and again. Walking in a bipedal manner on two feet is a fundamental characteristic of human beings. We are the only primates to do so almost exclusively upright. This means of locomotion is so specific to humans that its emergence in its habitual form during evolution remains a central question for scientists studying the origins of Homo sapiens. Far from the famous and cliched image of the March of Progress, the discoveries of recent decades testify instead to an evolution that is bush-like rather than linear, with several different species of hominids, some of them living at the same time. For six or seven million years, there has been a very wide variety of hominid species, which were distinct enough from one another to be identified as different. Overall, however, they have a structure that is mechanically compatible with biped balance. So they walk on two legs. But because when it comes down to details, they're not quite the same, we can suppose at least that this is the hypothesis that we formulated that these species could have practiced distinct forms of bipedalism. How did our hominin ancestors walk? And how can we find out? Gilles Berrian and his team have set up a research project combining paleoanthropology, anatomy and comparative biomechanics, and computer simulation. Their goal is to create a bipedal walking simulator that will make it possible to recreate an individual's gait from a 3D model of their skeleton. For example, an image of Lucy's hip bone. The team began its work with humans. The idea is to locate the salient points on the bones so that we can measure the movements of the skeleton with the markers. We are in the gymnasium of the ENS Higher Education and Research Institution in the northwestern French town of Rennes, which is equipped to study movement. In this case, walking. This student's gait will be modeled, turned into equations, thanks to the markers stuck to her skin, and whose position in space is recorded by a system of infrared cameras installed all around the room. Ready? Yes. All right, go. We can measure a great deal of data, angles at the joints over a period of time. We can also evaluate speed or acceleration. And with the force platforms on the floor, we can measure ground reaction forces and centers of pressure. All right, go. All of this information makes it possible to describe, in equations and values, the individual's gait cycle. This experimental data also serves as a first test for the bipedal simulator. For the computer tool under development to be valid for humans, it will have to recreate this same natural walk from the skeleton's anatomical data. And that's no mean feat. A movement is one example of combinations of all these variables at a given moment. However, there is an infinite number of possible combinations. We can walk in many different ways, more or less crouched, feet more or less apart or crossing, rather like a catwalk model. Out of all of these, we select one way of walking, and the main scientific challenge for us with a simulation is to be able to recreate that particular gait. Studying the way we walk in detail makes it possible to lay the theoretical foundations of human bipedalism. But if we want to recreate the bipedal walk of an Australopithecus, for example, human data won't be enough. It is quite clear that if we base ourselves solely on our morphology and our control of movement, we won't be able to extrapolate on creatures whose movements we know nothing about. So the idea is to accumulate large databases on the walking gates of the non-human primates that we can still measure, for example, baboons and chimpanzees, so that we can make comparisons and verify that there is a relationship between anatomical form and function, which you can't do if you only have one form. We therefore need to find other forms and are heading to the CNRS Primatology Station near Aix-en-Provence in southeastern France. The baboons that live there, as well as those in the wild, occasionally walk bipedally, as do many other non-human primates. Measuring the biomechanics of baboon bipedalism involves the installation of a surprising system consisting of cameras, visible this time, which are set up around the room in order to model the way the animals walk on their hind legs. 
It's taken a great deal of time and effort to get the primates used to the scientists and their measuring equipment, and for them to walk naturally on the treadmill. The animal mustn't accelerate or decelerate too much. It has to remain roughly in the same place on the treadmill and above all, walk in such a way that there are several cycles of steps. The measurements taken from these animals will make it possible, as it is for humans, to model their bipedalism. And as with humans again, it is this movement that the simulator will have to recreate based on the baboon's skeleton. The idea is that if it works for humans, if it works for a baboon, a chimpanzee, a bonobo, or a gibbon, there's a good chance that it will also work for the fossil hominin species, which come between all of these, or that the result will be plausible anyway. This fundamental research prompts scientists to better define bipedalism in primates, past and present, and to improve their understanding of the anatomical foundations of these bipedal gates. Researchers will also have to develop new IT tools based on the latest technological advances. The new simulation methods, whether based on machine learning or those that we are working on with the roboticists at the Laboratory for Analysis and Architecture of Systems in Toulouse, France, for example, will enable us to explore avenues that we couldn't have explored before. Off we go. Whether it's about gaining a better understanding of one of the most distinctive features of human beings, or finding applications in robotics or in the medical field, the Hobus Project will continue to fuel our constant march towards knowledge and progress.